Okay guys, welcome finally to the Node.js part to the Swift login system. Today we're going to be getting started on the Node.js. We're going to set up the project. I'm going to run over the software that we're going to be using. And it's going to take a little bit for us to get to the actual Swift code. So it's up to you if you want to code the Node.js along with me, or if you want to just download it and do the Swift code only, so you can learn the URL session, uh, HTTP requests, like get and post requests. Regardless, there is a little bit of setup that you're gonna have to go through. So one thing that I'll say is make sure that you're following the playlist in the description. So click on the playlist and watch it from there so you don't miss anything because there's gonna be a lot of shorter clips and such so that I can title them better for YouTube. So one thing that I do wanna say is that we're gonna be using MySQL. I'm going to be using MAMP for the PHP MyAdmin, but any MySQL database should work. I'm going to be using JSON web tokens and sending it as a cookie to the iOS phone. I've found it, I've used it before in like a production app and I found it uh, just fine. This is just a photo that I just found on the internet. This is Stack Overflow. But you'll have the client, which is the iOS app, and you will send to the sign in method the username and password. It will check the info with the database, it will create a JWT. Uh, with an expiration date, it will put that JWT in a cookie and it will send the response with the JWT. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to come to a browser and we need to download a few things. The first thing we need to download is Node.js. So you're going to come to nodejs.org slash en slash download. You can Google it as well and you'll download it. I assume that you're on Mac. So you're going to download that. Once you've done that, you want to do node slash v and it should say the version version. That way you know you have it uh, downloaded and then you're going to do npm slash v and then you're going to get your version number. So make sure both of those are working. The next thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a MySQL database. So this is probably the easiest way to do it. It's called MAMP. Okay. Uh, for Windows, there's ZAMP. Regardless, uh, MAMP is a little bit easier. All you have to do is you just download it and then you click start and then hopefully there'll be no issues. It'll start up. It uses PHP. It's mostly for web development. As you can see, it's going to pull up the map stuff. I've used this for like WordPress and just web dev in general. But if you go to PHP, my admin, you get the GUI with MySQL, so it's nice. You have other options. You also have MySQL server if you want to do this from the terminal. And you also have MariaDB. I've used that one before and PostgreSQL. So I'm just gonna go to these websites. You're just gonna wanna Google these, but you can choose what you want to use. I'm not sure what the difference between all the different terminal databases are. I personally, I've tried out PostSQL, but I didn't love it. I use MySQL service, the community edition. You're going to want to search up MySQL community download. But besides that, I think MAMP is the easiest. It's I can use the terminal with uh, SQL, but I still prefer to use PHP my admin. It's much nicer. So we're going to start setting up the Node.js. So the first thing that we're going to want to do to set up the Node.js is we're going to make a directory. I'm going to paste in a pretty long name, but I'm going to call it Node Swift Login System Backend Tutorial. I'm going to CD into that directory. So one thing I'm going to be doing is using TypeScript. I really don't like um, weekly typed languages and TypeScript is a little bit hacky and it's not as nice as having actually something like Swift, which is going to force types and you have to import types and stuff. So I'm not 100% sure how to do everything. So it's not perfect, but it's all right. But what we're going to do is we're going to do npm init. I'm going to paste in the package name that I want. You can make this shorter. Version doesn't matter. Description doesn't matter. Now our entry point, you're going to do, if you're going to use TypeScript, you're going to do server.ts. Otherwise, you're going to do .js. And I think that's correct, but we may have to correct it. Test command, just enter, get repository, enter, keywords, enter, author, enter. And then we can just say yes. So if we look, we now have a package.json file. 
So now I'm just going to do npm install. I'm going to ls, and it's going to make the package lock JSON. So now we need to install some npm packages. We're going to say npm i express and cookie parser. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to do npm install slash g or dash g type script. Now, I already have TypeScript installed, so it failed, um, but you can try to run that. We're also going to do something else to install it anyways. So let's just cat our package.lock, and we have express and cookie parser. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say TSC for TypeScript dash dat dash init. Now, that npm install uh, dash g TypeScript should have worked for you. And then in that case, you should be able to do TSC dash v, and it should give you your version. <clears throat> so in that case, we're gonna do the init command, and it's gonna create, if you look, it's gonna create this TS config file with a bunch of stuff. But now we're gonna do npm i, dash dash save dash dev and then i'm gonna copy and paste all these in there's quite a bit but there's the types for express there's the types for node there's ts node there's typescript and then there's no daemon or node mon or whatever um i i call it no daemon but that's going to install and node daemon what it does is it makes it so you don't have to like stop and start your node app over and over again it gets really annoying so let's vim into our package.json and let's take a look and it looks like we've got typescript in there we have ts node we have no daemon we're going to be adding quite a few more things but yeah so now it's up to you which uh editor you want to use it doesn't really matter if you use vs code or webstorm i have i think webstorm is paid but i have a license for the next month or maybe it's only like two more weeks but you're going to want to find your project um you can literally just drag it in and then open it it's gonna open your thing. So you're gonna have your node modules, you're gonna have your package JSON, you're gonna have your package lock, and your TS config. So the TS config is what we're gonna focus on now. But first, I'm just gonna open up the terminal and we're gonna make two directories. So let's just make sure we're in our root directory with all these. We're gonna mkdir source and uh, mkdir src and mkdir this we're going to say touch source slash server dot ts and then source slash app dot ts let's just ls our source and we have those so we're gonna scroll down to modules and you'll see module common uh, js we're also going to want to uncomment this root directory and we're going to say source and we're going to uncomment this module resolution to have node. Now we're going to scroll down to JavaScript support and we're going to allow JS and check JS. Now we're going to go down to this out directory. We're going to uncomment that and we're going to say dist. So we're going to continue going down and just make sure everything is fine. And it looks like everything is fine. So we should be good. So we're gonna go back to the package JSON file. So in our package file, we have the scripts uh, thing. So we wanna add a, another script. We're gonna enter, we're gonna say dev, and our dev is gonna be no, de no daemon source server.ts. So what's gonna happen here is if you do npm run dev it's gonna no daemon on that server.ts file now there's nothing there so it's not gonna do anything but if we said console.log howdy it is going to print out howdy yeah so we have howdy and let's do node source server.ts and it'll run it but as you can see the application stops once it's done not update as you're typing new code so if i run 
the no daemon source server, or the other option is to do npm run dev. Either of these options are gonna continue to keep it and refresh it. So watch this, if I delete, right now it's complaining because I just have a C here. If I get rid of that and save the file with command S, it's gonna rerun it. So now I can do console.log howdy world. And if I save it, it's going to restart it. And now we have howdy world. So it's a lot better than having to manually restart every single time. Now we have two files here. We have app.ts and server.ts. Server.ts is going to be the starting point for the app. We're gonna go into our app.ts. We're gonna say import express from express. And we, then we need the app. We're gonna say const app equals express with a open and close brackets. Now, I also want to import a few more things from this express. So we're gonna say with the squiggly lines, we want application, we want router, we want request, we want response, and we want next function. So this app, we're gonna do a colon after application, just like Swift. So then at the very bottom, we're gonna say module.exports equals app. So we're gonna export the app so that other files can use it. Now, I quickly want to do this. We're gonna say app.get. So this is a get request. We're gonna do single quotations and a forward slash. So then we're gonna do a comma behind it. We're gonna make open and close parameters. We're going to want rec. We're gonna say rec, which is request. We're gonna say res, which is response. We're gonna say next, which is next function. Outside of those parentheses, we're gonna do a equals and a greater than sign. And then we're gonna give it squiggly and then enter. We can put a colon at the end, semicolon. So then we're gonna say res.status200. JSON, okay, with parenthesis and then squiggly lines. Then we're gonna say success colon and make sure that the success is not in quotations, but the next part we're gonna say in quotations, hello server. Okay, so when we run this app, it's going to, if you just go to the root directory of the URL, you're gonna get hello server as the response. And I'll probably try to explain more of this once we get started. But now we're gonna to want to, so that should all be working. We're gonna to wanna to go to server. We're gonna delete all this and we're gonna import a few things. Import HTTP from uh, quotations HTTP. Then I'm gonna say const app equals require uh, quotations dot slash app. So then we're gonna choose the port. So we're gonna say const port equals, and we'll get into this in a bit, but we're gonna say process dot env dot port capitalized. Um, otherwise, we're gonna use the or operator 5000. So it's gonna to try to get this environment variable, which we haven't set up yet. Otherwise it's gonna use 5,000. So then we're gonna say const server equals http.create server. We're gonna pass the app in, okay? So then we're gonna say server.listen and we're gonna pass in the port first, comma, and then we're gonna feed it a function. Uh, so we can just do parenthesis equals greater than and then console.log and you can say and you'll we're going to want to use backticks so these ones we're going to say running on port uh, with a dollar signs curly lines and then in there we're going to pass in the port variable so hopefully if we do npm run dev it's going to work so it says running on port 5000. Now, so one tool that we're gonna be using quite a bit is Postman. And you should download it, it's free. You might have to create an account. I don't seem to be signed in, so it seems fine, but just search Postman. 
it's this. And it allows us to send get request. It allows us to send post request. It allows us to send a whole bunch of things and it's super helpful. Uh, I don't know if there's other software available. I don't even know. You can make a get request from the, so I'll, sh I'll show you this. So if we go to localhost 5000, as you can see, we're on the root directory. It would look like this with this slash at the end. So it says hello server. That's what we wanted. We have a JSON object of hello server, but we could also do that with Postman. So this is a get request. This is what we just did in the browser. We can open post, uh, Postman and we can also say localhost 5000. And we're also going to be making a get request. Now we can do like post, put, patch, delete. We'll probably dive into what these are a little bit more, but I'm not sure if you can make this in the browser, but you definitely can on Postman, so you should download that. So there's a few more things I want to do before I end this video. We're going to start MySQL in the next video, but for now, what we're the way that we're going to be authenticating is we're going to be using cookies and we're also going to be using JSON web tokens. We're going to say const cookie parser equals require cookie parser. So below we're going to say app.use cookie parser with a parenthesis constructor. Now there's a few more things that we're just going to set up. We're just going to set up this for now. We're going to say app.use and we're going to say in parenthesis express dot JSON with parenthesis. So for now, I think I'm going to leave that there. That's good enough. Um, if you save it, it should run and compile. You can do command S. And that's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to start MySQL. We're going to get that all set up and we're going to test it out. And then we're going to continue forward.